Welcome back to redheart.com as well as the crochet crowd. I'm your host Mikey. Today's tutorial we're going to work on a double take pillow. This is a really interesting pillow because it's actually the corner to corner technique. So what you're seeing in this pillow, let me just briefly describe it, is that you have four panels right in the front. So you have one, two, three, and four and they are just whip stitched together right in the center to create the illusion of the diamond shape. On the back you can either repeat the same pattern of creating the four and sewing them together or you can just make one solid panel just like so. This kind of idea allows you to make a reversible pillow so this side you can have this color but then you can do four more of a different color just turn it over so that you have basically a reversible pillow for your home. So join me right now as I show you how to make one of these double take pillows. Free pattern is available on redheart.com. There's a link in the more information of this video and let's take you down to the studio and get started right now. For today's tutorial we're going to need four blocks that look like this and they're amazing. They actually come together to form the shape in the center of the pillow and then on the reverse I kind of cheated and I did one major block instead of doing four but you can uh, make that creativity up to you. You can even do the pillows in one solid block and I'll show you what I mean in just a moment. So essentially every one of these squares are equaling nine blocks. So what does that mean? So when I pull apart the project you'll notice that there's kind of a blocking and basically these are the double crochets on their side and then they're uh, here and then here. And if you pull them apart they look like blocks. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And because this is a square that no matter how I turn it there will always be nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So if you're doing the back panel and you wanna cheat the system what you have to do is that there's gonna be one sitting beside each, each other so there'd be a four in the front. So essentially if you have nine on one and nine on the other that the big block on the back will have a total of 18 of these blocks going all the way across and that's how you would do it if you wanna cheat the system. So without further ado I'm gonna take you on getting this started. There's a free pattern and the more information to be able to follow along if you prefer. This is how you do it. You're gonna start off with the very center. So this little square here or this section here is the very center of the pillow. The next block will come in side by side just like so. I haven't actually trimmed off my hands but this is how it will look and essentially we want to create four of these and these are all identical to each other so it doesn't matter how you do it. If you want them to be non-identical <laughs> you just have to change your yarn in order to suit. You can choose any colors you wish. I'm kind of going with my theme this year and this is how we're gonna get started. So we're gonna start off with doing the very center first. So in actual fact we're gonna start off like this. So let's begin our first block. We're going to start off with the slip knot just like so and creep it a little bit longer so you can use it and we're gonna be using a size E three and a half millimeter. The pattern calls for 3.75 a size F. I know that my stitch tension is a little bit looser than normal people so then I wanna compensate and I'm using just a slightly smaller hook. To begin this project we need to, remember this doesn't count as one so we need to count up to three. So one, two, three and then add another three. So it's a total of six, one, two, and three. The reason why I'm having you do that counting it separately like that from three to three is that it makes a difference when you're going to work on it if you're thinking about this more strategically. So going from the fourth from the hook so we count back one, two, three, four and we wanna double crochet ourselves into the fourth like so and do the next two chains with a double crochet as well. And this is the very bottom of your corner for your particular um, center piece of your pillow. So this is what it looks like at this moment. So here's where we are. This is how you turn it and so you you have it just like so. So now you're just gonna flip it like this and now we're going to chain up three. So this is my strategic way of doing it. So I go one, two, three Okay and right where you've got that third one right underneath you pinch and then go one, two, and three. The reason why I'm having you pinch there because that's your starting chain. So you don't need to always count back to the fourth and then you double crochet that chain plus the two other ones before you run back into that bottom block. Okay so I'm referring to all these sections as they work together as blocks and you'll see how that makes sense in just a moment. So you'll have a total of what appears to be three double crochets 
plus your chain. So now what we need to do is that we need to turn this block. It's not turned properly. Turn it up so that we're looking at the wrong side and this should be straight down. So if this block was um, sitting on top as a diamond, this should be the very bottom. Okay, so if it's a turn like this and it's out to the side, it's not gonna work. So what we need to do is just go in between the posting space on the very last one where you've done the chain and just slip stitch like so. And now we're going to chain three. So one, two, and three. And then we just double crochet three more times into that same chain three space. So one, two, and three. Like so. Okay, so now we need to turn our work. So let's turn our work. This is the last time we're gonna be using this color. So we turn our work and again we chain three. So one, two, three, pinch it, one, two, three. In the instructions it'll say chain six and then if you do it the way I'm showing it then you just double crochet back to where you pinched it and then the other two as well. So it's a very easy stitch. It's a very, very popular stitch. Okay, and so essentially now that you have this, you gotta make sure that this is facing straight down like a diamond shape and then basically this gapping space right here, your chain three is where you're going to single, or you're going to slip stitch. See how I just automatically kind of turned it like this? You're kind of working up like a set of stairs. So one, two, three, and then three more double crochets into that same space. So it's almost like a granny square, like it's easy. You don't have to pay attention to every little stitch that you see. You're just working into spaces. Once you get your three in, you're looking for the next outside space. Slip stitch first and then chain three. One, two, three, and then three more double crochets. So each one of these in the very beginning of that block, there's only three rows like so. So once you have that done, I want you then to fasten this color off. We're just gonna grab our scissors, my Westcott scissors, trim, and then I just wanna kind of pull it through this hole and then I'm ready to go. I wanna remember where this is because when I pick up the next project or the next color, I'll be ready to go with that one. So I wanna start off with my green next and I'm just creating a slip knot first just secures it even better and right where we have fastened off I want to insert my hook and then just bring on this new yarn like so. So just slip stitch it in and then chain three. One, two, three, pinch. One, two, three and then right where you're pinching is the fourth from the hook for a double crochet and then you have two more left on your chain going back. Okay, and so you go all the way back to the, to where you started. So now this is where you have to hide in these loose ends. So you're gonna grab the strand that you fastened off with the new strand that's fastened in and when you slip stitch it around this next gapping space, you wanna make sure that those are trapped around there as well. And now chain three. One, two, three. Okay, so these are just sitting on top and you could just go around them. And I do it for one whole box before trimming. Like so. Okay, you can do another one if you wish. If you feel it's not enough, you can just, just pull it through. You will not really see it. And then one, two, three, and going in. So every time you do a row, you're increasing one box per side. Okay, so you got four boxes here. You only have three now at this point. So you can see that when I finish this row, there will be equal number of boxes on both sides. So we want a total of nine. So we're just gonna slip, chain three. Okay, so you wanna continue the same principle with the green and uh, I'm gonna let you do the next two by themselves. So let's just review again. So you're just gonna turn, chain three, one, two, three, pinch, one, two, three, and then right where you're pinching is the double crochet. And continue to do that all the way and I'm gonna just join you back up. We're gonna do three rows of green. So this is one, two, and three. When I come back, I'll start you off with the next color which I believe is brown or a sand color. 
So I've now just finished the green and I wanna grab up my sandy color and just kinda go in and make a slip knot and I wanna insert my hook into the last where I stopped the green where I fastened off and then I simply just want to do my chaining of three again. So basically one, three and then one, two, three. Right where I pinched is my first double crochet and then the other two. So I wanna do three layers of the sandy color and we want to do that and then just fasten off and then we're gonna begin blue but don't start the blue without uh, going on this video if you're not sure at this point. The blue we actually are gonna start decreasing immediately when we begin to do blue. So do three, three layers of the sandy color or whatever color you've decided to do for your particular pillow and then just make sure you lay these stragglers down on top so that you can actually trap them into position so you won't see them when it's sitting on your sofa. So now I've just finished off my sandy color and I'm ready to decrease. Now remember I said to you in the very beginning that we have nine blocks. So you can actually count them now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and then I have it in the other direction. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So now I'm actually ready to decrease because if I grow with the blue for the remainder and I go any bigger then you're gonna end up with 10 and that's how you would do um, the back panel. So for example we only have nine right now. You wanna continue to grow this until you have a total of 18 of these boxes before doing the decrease. So let's show you how to do the decrease at this moment and we wanna turn our work and then we wanna grab up our next color which will be blue. Okay so this is my standard color. I create a slip knot as we have been before and right where I fastened off the blue Okay, or the sandy color. I wanna just kinda lay that on top and I wanna insert it. So you look here, you got the first post, second and third. Go to the third, the top of the thing. Do not go into this gap, okay. It doesn't balance itself properly if you go into that gap right away. So you wanna go into an actual stitch. So let's just uh, slip stitch this on, okay. And we want to chain three. So one, two, three. We're no longer doing the six. Okay, the three and three like I showed you. And essentially now I want you to turn the project like this. Now leave these down on top, okay. And this is a covering over the first post like so. And we wanna double crochet ourselves three times into that same post. So you're already doing this work. The only difference is, is that we're no longer growing. So in every row that we do now we're actually decreasing by one box in both um, X and Y or X and Y um, axis if you really wanna think about it from this point of view. So continuing along just put these stragglers down on top, go into the next section that you would have normally gone into if you were growing. This is exactly the same thing. So one, two, three, hide those stragglers again around that next post area. And continue along but you're not gonna go all the way to the, the very last box and grow it like you have been. Essentially you wanna stop one box early. So continue to go across and I'll meet you back before we actually finish off this row. So we're coming all the way back to the end just like so. So you can see where I am. So essentially I don't wanna keep growing. So I'm on top of this box. I wanna be staying right beside it. So we're gonna chain three, one, two and three and we just wanna finish this final box right here. So we don't wanna get any bigger so that we don't increase the one size. If you wanna do a rectangular idea then you would continue to go along even though you've stopped growing on this side. That's the way to do it. So once you get that done just slip stitch around and then that's it. Okay so you don't wanna go any further so you're now creating a flat edge this side. Simply turn the work and you have now three posts that are there. Insert the hook and just slip stitch until you get to the third post or get to the third stitch like so. And now you're ready to chain three. So one, two and three. Again along this side post here is that you'll do three double crochets. And this is how you would actually decrease if you're going to do it. And I need you to keep doing this back and forth continuing to decrease by one block on either side 
and then just starting each row just the way I just showed you and this will take you in doing a full square. When we come back I'm going to start showing you how to assemble your pillow. You just make sure you do four of these and if you wanna do eight of them you can do reversible pillow in many ways but you'll notice that most pillows have a good side and a back side that pretty well is never faced. So it's up to you on how you wanna finish your pillow at this particular point. So let's continue and when I come back we'll start getting the assembly all ready for you. So let's clean up our loose ends. At this point you've been hiding them in as you're going and I've just left it all, all the squares to the very last and essentially you've hidden them well enough that you could just safely cut them and your project won't fall apart. Knock on wood. Just like so. So just continue to clean up all of your squares. You can leave on the ends if you wish and we can deal with those afterwards. The next part of this tutorial requires you to have a little bit of patience. Now you'll notice that they're solid colors of the burgundy, the green, the sand and the blue and when they come together you wanna make sure that the colors kind of align with each other to create the ultimate perfect front look when you're doing this. Now the only way to really do that effectively is to use the same color. So what you want to do is that you'll want to whip stitch these together just like so using the burgundy and then stop the burgundy and then right where it's green you're gonna want to do that. So I'm gonna show you just the whip stitching of just the one color here and then I'll leave the rest for you and essentially these four panels right in the front need to come together with uh, an ultimate precision before we start on with the back to sew everything final with the pillow form inside. So let's begin the whip stitching. I'm gonna start off with a slip knot and just leave it open on the one side and the other side I already have into a darning needle. Okay, so we want to commit to one side that is our working project. So this side is going to be like this side up is gonna be my inside of my pillow. So I'm going, I'm just going to grab the yarn in one side of the burgundy. Okay, and then the other side of the burgundy and when I pull through I'm gonna run into that slip knot that I started off with. Insert the needle through that loop and pull tight get the straggler that's leaving on top and just continue to whip stitch only the burgundy into position. Okay, and this will create a little bit of a ridge on the underside of the pillow but of course you will not see that because the good side will be there. Now this is the corner to corner so both sides of this particular panel will be a good side uh, because you have gone back and forth and so basically it doesn't really matter on which sides are facing up. You just wanna be more concerned about the pattern actually gelling and actually making a lot of sense. When you get to the end here, okay, what I would do is grab the other two panels because you're running out of stitches here. Grab the other two panels, okay, and just continue to use the burgundy. Okay, just go through the one here and through the other. Just like so. So you kind of do wanna pay attention a bit to how it's looking and making sure it makes a lot of sense when you go to do it like so. Okay, we're just doing a quick inspection of it. You will notice in this kind of stitch that you'll see that um, it has like indentations and etc. You just wanna make sure the indentations are matching each other when they go together. So I guess that's the only thing you really do need to pay attention about. So either side is the good side but the indentations are very specific uh, depending on which order that you're putting them into. So we're just continuing to slip stitch into the burgundy only. And then when I get to the end of the burgundy I'm just gonna just fasten this off and I'm just matching the stitches as closely as I can. So only into the burgundy if you go into any other color then it will show. And then once you get to the end like this you simply just weave it in a few of the fibers and go back and forth three times. One, two and three. And simply now once I get this done I wanna start off with the next layer. So let's just cut that first. So I wanna turn my project and so I have it sewn together in the vertical now just in the burgundy creating another slip knot here and starting in the burgundy on the outside. Continue just into the burgundy itself on both sides. Pull it through, pull, put the needle through the slip knot like so and just continuing to match them up and go all the way across and then fasten this off on the other side and do the same for the green and the sandy on all 
four panels. So here is my panel all sewn together. This is the bad side and this is the good side here. You can see it looks really good. I'm really happy with it. All the blocks meet. There are now a total of 18 blocks along here. So basically I can either do another set like this and do a completely different or I can make another box that is completely one piece just like this and it has 18 along one side, 18 along the other. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna put all the stragglers on the inside of this particular form and I'm just going to not grab the pillow form at this time. I've, I need to get three sides in before you can even start worrying about that. So what I wanna do is that I wanna grab a piece of the yarn that matches. The only place it's not gonna match is the brown here and that's not gonna be a, a deal breaker for me. So let's put these in the inside and essentially all I'm just going to do is that you can decide to either either sew these together or you can speed up the process and crochet them. You're good at crocheting, why not? So what I want to do is that I wanna match all of the stitches up together with each other. And by crocheting around like this, you can also just add more fringing to it afterward because then you'll have some stitch work. So I'm going in one side and going in the other, okay? And I'm just going to do single crochet. So I'm just gonna slip stitch first, I'm gonna chain one, then single crochet into the same one and then on the corners what I wanna do is single crochet, chain two, single crochet when I'm turning corners but now I just wanna match everything up and just keep everything kinda pinned together and making sure that these stragglers stay on the inside. So please do that all the way around and so I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna just have the pillow form inside as I close it right in front of your eyes. So I've now crocheted around three sides of it and you can see it here. This is the good side just like so. So it's really nice and thick now and now I'm ready to slide in my pillow form just right into there. So when I come back I'll have that slid in and then I'm just gonna crochet along this and then call this project done for today. Okay, I now have my pillow inside and essentially all I just wanna do is just kinda squeeze together the ends and just double or just single continue to single crochet myself all the way across. So continuing just to match up the sides to the sides and just continuing to do it's easier to do it on my lap so I'm gonna just uh, finish this up on my lap and you can see that it actually turned out really good so far. So when I come back I'll have that done and then we can do a conclusion for this video today. So that's it for today. This is how my pillow turned out. I'm really excited about it. It looks great for my home decor that I have going on for Christmas 2014. Going for the woodsy theme this year and I went for colors that are more traditional associated to the holiday season versus doing red and white. Until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of redheart.com as well as the crochet crab. We'll see ya.